Um, I usually look at the theme, the uh, again, essential question during understanding, and I think you, uh, again, you, Andy, said the best when you, uh, a couple years ago, said it's not your curriculum, first of all. The textbook is not the curriculum. And it, again, starts with, again, the essential under, uh, essential question or during understanding. And then I look at really the, I go through the textbook. And I make sure I look at, first of all, high interest. Okay, if it's not the anchor text, which again, we have to do and good for, for good reason. If it's high interest, if I know that, again, if I can somehow, again, uh, make it relevant to the kids, that again, that's going to be, again, something I look into teaching. I know I look at the questions always at the back of every selection that I choose, whether or not I'm gonna incorporate that on my quiz, whether or not, again, the levels, whether or not they adhere to the Common Core standards, whether or not there are questions there that I think they're gonna, are gonna be on the EOC or the park, whatever. I just look at really thinking about my students, think about my higher, regular, lower kids, each selection, how, the, how it's gonna fit, go back to them. And then uh, overall the unit really helps me, the, the curriculum map, because like I said, it, the textbook's not my curriculum, so I have to go and I gotta find short stories, I gotta find articles, whatever, that again connect to the unit. And it's just nice knowing, big picture wise, what are really the, the deep, again, essential beliefs, values, ideas I want the kids to come away from after every unit. And collections is great, the, the curriculum maps, again, it's a nice guide, because I need that. Because again, I'm someone who again, I need some type of organization structure because I feel like my one of my strengths is being very creative and again, knowing what kids are going to find, again, in, engaging. And the freedom has limits and basically what I did was uh, I used, uh, I went to the acre text that kids are supposed to again, uh, try to uh, read, absorb and dissect for the overall unit, which was Letter from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr. And really the process is very simple, it's a tough text especially for that class. Mm -hmm. That class right now, it's the end of the year, they're not motivated. And I know that this is going to be a pretty big endeavor for them to take on. So I'm like, okay, in my mind, how can I filter this in terms of the big ideas, the, the challenging, again, words, so on and so forth, and how can I make it, again, more, again, palpable for them? How can I make them on a Monday come in and want to actually learn about Martin Luther King Jr.? So I just said very simply, again, let's broad, general. Do, what do you know about this guy? I want to make sure that they have, again, some idea who he is, because some kids aren't familiar with him. So I started it with, again, just some basic questions. Who he was, what he did for a living, why is he famous, so on and so forth. Broad. And then more and more specifically, we go into, again, Birmingham. Again, actually why that started everything, why, that's a, why that is such, a, again, a seminal uh, historical event. And then uh, we then showed a video, because all these kids anymore, again, with their phones and everything else, they need that. They need something. So I take some of that and I just, I was looking online on my own and just found this Citizen King PBS documentary. And I only showed a five minute segment of the actual Birmingham incident. And, and I know that if I have some kids who are just tired or maybe again, some happened over the weekend, I know that if they weren't maybe listening to the background, uh, you know, questions, and if they weren't really participating in the turn and talk, I know that they're probably going to watch the video at least, because that's just a different medium that's it, you know, again, some of them are more visual. And again, just get them, get their uh, appetite to look, you know, just ready. Just get them a little bit uh, engaged before I go right into the text. And then the text, of course, I read aloud to them. I then, more than anything else, it's just modeling how I would read this text. The questions I would ask. I ask them aloud. I don't give them the answer, obviously. I wait, I want them to talk. I want, again, I do, they always have to do something when I'm reading. I always want them to either highlight something, write something down, or at least I'm going to stop and I'm going to talk. And I go back to my grad school days and I, again, I had similar teachers in there when they weren't in my, the grad school I went to, it was very much on your own. You had to basically, they weren't going to give you a lot of information. You sort of had to create a lot. You sort of had to go on your own to find stuff. People didn't like that, of course. They want to be told what to do and they'll do it. That's not me. Again, if you give me some freedom of choice, to pick stories, articles, passages, writing prompts that I can, again, I'm gonna be more motivated. And that's fine that people want more. I can see why, because it's more work. It takes, uh, creativity takes an extraordinary amount of effort, especially creating, again, uh, a lesson that's going to, again, fulfill these kids' needs.